Hello. We're going to learn to draw the eye, uh, the eyeball. Now, if we're just going to be doing artwork that is non-objective, non-representational, and uh, we're going to be using our uh, styles like uh, expressionism, cubism, abstract, well, we don't have to worry about this. But if you're going to try to draw uh, human eyes uh, and realistic portraits, faces, we're going to have to have an idea as to how the eye is constructed. So this is the eye here, the eyeball. Uh, the white area is your sclera. The eyeball is behind in the socket of the skull which is connected, the eyeball is connected to muscles that control it. And the skin, the where the eyelashes are at, cover the eyeball. The color part, the green one, is your iris. That's your muscle part of the eyeball that shuts and opens, contracts and expands according to the light and you have your black spot that looks black but it's not it's clear but since we don't have light coming in through our eyes well, we don't see the inside so if you go to an eye doctor he's gonna take lights and flush them in there to examine your eye so the sclera the iris on the pupil the pupil changes sizes according to the amount of light the red lines are your excess lines that cross. Your iris, the color part, is in the center of the eyeball. And the reason that I drew this red lines here, the excess lines, uh, north to south, east to west, is so that you can see if I'm looking at the person, uh, a frontal view, well, I'm going to have that excess line created an X and I see the iris and so on but remember part of your iris and your sclera white part are going to be covered but I want you to keep in mind that these lines will give you an idea as to how the circles which is your your iris and your pupil will change to ellipses or ovals for example if your eyes turns you can see the excess lines being curved so we don't see the whole eyeball okay now if I'm looking upward well now the perspective of the eyeball is different of the iris and the pupil so depending on the position and of the eye is what I see and what's going to dictate the drawing Okay, and again, unless you're going to use or, or uh, unless you're concerned with a uh, non uh, representational art, then we don't worry about this. Another thing, too, is that you got to realize that there's billions of people in this world and we're all different. If we all have the same parts to the face and the eyes, what makes us different? Well, this is where it becomes a little more technical because we really have to be observers of the individual person so that we can capture their characteristics, uh, what makes them. So, the uh, I will be doing some illustrations, okay? I will be drawing some illustrations of the eyeballs. And as once we understand the excess lines, how they change, how they curve, and so on, okay? Then I can go ahead and eliminate the diagram of my sclera, which is behind the skin coverings. So here we go. So what I get, keep in mind is that here's my sclera. You're sketching in lightly, it doesn't have to be perfect. Then my axis line, and I'm going to draw a 
an eye that or an eye that is facing me, then I do my sclera, not my sclera, excuse me, my iris, kind of, and then the pupil. Okay, so now I have to determine: is this person facing me, um, looking at me, and I'm looking straight at them? So then we're gonna have an X. Okay, so now we have to keep in mind that the skin and the eardrops or the tear glands are to the inside of the nose. Here's the nose. So now I go ahead and set up my select my the lines that I need. Okay, the sclera, the white part is going to be behind. And another characteristic of the uh, human eye is that it reflects lights. So let's say we're taking a school picture with one flash and it's going to give us the highlight. Now you will only see this highlight in, in a, a live person because it's wet. Your eye is wet. It's always wet. Okay. So you're going to have reflections. Now we have to decide the eye of this person. Now, when I was teaching, some of the kids would draw and they would cover the pupil. So now the skin is over the pupil. And again, it depends on the person, how much of the um, bottom part of the iris am I going to cover. Okay? And then, again, we're just concentrating on the and concerned with the eye because you have your eyebrows, you have the depth, you have the depth of the skin over here, and so on. And then you have your eyelashes. Okay, so now from here on, as long as remember that you need to imagine this line across from one side of the other, and each person is different. So, and some people will have the uh, eyelids a little higher, a little lower, and so on. And then depending on the shading, the lighting is what determines the, sh the shading of the, uh, around the eye and the depth. Okay? So those are the things. And the pupil, again, can be different sizes depending on the amount of light that we see. And then you start creating your... your texture of the eye or the patterns of the eye inside color or whatever it is. So I'm going to be drawing some. I'm not going to be talking about uh, any more about the uh, main parts of the eye, but you will be able to see the different shapes. So I'm going to begin now.